hopefully you're not making your charts like this inside of Canva. While yes, that may work, there's a much better and much easier way to do it. So let's hop into Canva and see for ourselves. Charts and graphs can be such a powerful tool when it comes to business because it helps you visualize data and you can analyze it and then make informed decisions. So if you had a bunch of data, one was like this and one was like this, which one would be easier for you not only to read, but to also determine results. If you're like most people, the graph is gonna be just a little bit easier to read because you can visualize the data instead of looking at a wall of numbers. So let's jump into Canva and learn everything that you need to know about making charts and graphs. So once you have your design open, we're gonna go over here on the left and click on elements. From there, you're just gonna scroll down until you see charts and tables. We're going to start with charts, so we're just going to click on see all. As you can see, there are several different charts here that we can choose from. We're not going to go over every single one of them because if they all work pretty similarly and if you know how to use one, you can probably figure out how to use another one, but we will go over a couple of them. So let's just start with this bar chart. So we're going to click on the very first one and it's just going to pop into our design. And you may notice that I, I am double clicking and you can't edit the numbers you can't edit the text there's nothing you can do over here that will let you change this chart instead you're gonna go over here on the sidebar and there's this little table and you can see it says item one two three four five series one two three etc and we can even scroll through and see more of the series so this is actually where you're gonna edit the text so you just click here and you can just write over it if you don't need five items, then you're just gonna click on it and hit the backspace. And you're also wanna clear out any other data that's in this row as well. And that'll get rid of it. Then if you wanna add one, then all you do is you click on the last box and it'll add a new row for you. So if you need more than however many rows this is, you just click on the last one and it'll just keep continually adding more and more. For this example, we're just gonna pretend that we are a course creator and we have three courses and we are going to see what that looks like over the course of a few years. We have our labels in here and I'm just gonna leave the numbers that were already here. We're just gonna pretend that that's our numbers. Also, if you have a lot of data and you already have it in an Excel file or a CSV, you can upload it right here at the bottom. It says upload CSV. You're just gonna wanna make sure that your CSV file is set up the same way as this table so that the data transfers over beautifully with no problems. So now that we have the data in here, let's take a look at what settings we can do to start really customizing this bar chart to however we want it to look. When you click on settings, you see there are some options here. So you can show the legend and I will toggle that on real quick and you can see that it added these numbers up here at the top. So that corresponds with each bar. So if you see, it shows the light blue is 2020. So each of these light blue bars is 2020. And then the same goes, the middle one is 2021. And then the far right one is 2022. So you can either toggle that on or off. And the labels, that is the numbers here and the words down here at the bottom. Oh, I misspelled course right there, but that's okay. It's just an example. So we can just turn that on and off. And then also the grid lines, which is these lines here in the middle, you can turn those on and off as well. And then the last one is swap rows and columns. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. If we hit it, it just switches which one is here at the bottom and which ones are up here at the top. So it put our years down here and put courses here instead of how we had it before, where we had the courses at the bottom. Now let's click on the chart itself. Oh, also I forgot to mention, if you don't see the, the bar on the left, all you have to do is click on the chart. If for whatever reason it's still not showing up, you just hit edit and it'll toggle the settings. Let's look up here to see what other ways we can do to customize it. Of course, we can change the colors. So I'm just gonna select all of these pink because pink's my favorite color, so why not? 
So that is one way that you can customize it. You can also click on this button, which is spacing, and you'll see we can change the column spacing. So, so we can put a lot of space between the columns or we can put no space between the columns. So that's one way. The next setting is roundness, and this is gonna be how round the corners are on each bar. So if you watch, if we turn it all the way down, we have pretty sharp corners here. And if we put it all the way the other way and make them fully round, they're very round. So that is um, how we can customize the chart that way. And then of course you have your typical text settings here. So you can actually change the way that this text looks. So I can just click on some random one real quick and you can see it changes how that looks. Okay, so that's fairly easy. So let's just delete that one and look at some of these other ones and see how they work as well. I am just gonna click on this pie chart and it puts a nice slice of pie in there for us. And it's pretty much the same. You put your labels in over here. You fill in all your data here. Click on the settings. And as you can see, we do have a little bit different of settings here. I'm sorry, my dog is chewing on a bone. So if you hear that, apologies. Just ignore it. So you can choose whether to show it as percentages or numbers. So right here it says 20% for item five. If we switch that to numbers, it'll change it to the actual number. So you can do that. You can also hide those and have just the chart. Again, you have the colors up here that you can customize. And then of course you can change the uh, font and text sizes and colors and all of that good stuff as well. We have some other ones as well. The infographics charts are a little bit different, but they're still just as easy to use. So let's just run through a couple of these really quickly so you can, maybe you didn't even know some of these existed. So let's just take a look at these. This one is a project dial. And to change any of the sizes of any of the charts, you can just grab the corner handles and move it around. Some of them may have little size handles on the top and bottom. So you can just look out for that as well if you wanna make it taller versus skinnier, etc. So this is a progress dial and it's really Really neat and simple. It's pretty easy to use. You just slide these bars up and down and then you can customize the way the dial like the actual like bar looks with this and just be sure to note that this is set in percentages so if you're using numbers you'll just want to convert whatever numbers you're using into a percentage before you use that and there's one more that i want to show you which is this pictogram because i think these are really fun and neat so when you first click on it it has little people, right? But you can choose any of these different icons. So maybe you have a habit tracker and you wanna track how much water you're drinking throughout the day. You can click on the little water drop. You can adjust your colors up here. And then if you scroll down, well, I guess you don't scroll, but just look down, you can adjust how many items there are. You can adjust how many of them are filled and you can adjust how much spacing is between each one. So that's a really neat tool to use for tracking progress or anything like that. So get creative with it and I'm sure you'll have some fun. So now we're turning the tables and looking at tables. Very cheesy. Mm look at some tables. To find the tables, remember, we just go to elements, scroll down, there's a whole section for tables. And as you can see, there are three different styles of tables. And then those styles are just repeated in different colors. Okay, so I'm just going to click this middle one here. And you can grab the little corner handles and make it bigger or smaller. You can also grab uh, the side handles and adjust it like that. Also the top and bottom. To adjust the row sizes, you can click in here and adjust things individually as well. Same with the columns. You can make one really little or however you need to make it. For the tables, all you do is you click on each box which is also known as a cell. So you can click in a cell and then you can start typing to put your letters in there. Or if you click it once and then you click it again, you'll see your little cursor. Um, I don't know what that's called. Your little flashing 
text cursor thing. <laughs> then you know you can put in your text. To edit the colors, you will just want to click on whichever cells you're wanting to change the colors of. And then up here at the top, you'll click and you'll change the color. Fun fact, if you wanna select more than one, or a whole row or a whole column, you can click on the last one, hold down shift, and then click on the last one. So from the first to the last one. I may have said last one twice a while ago, but so you'll hold down shift, click on the first one, and then click on the last one. Let go of shift and then change your colors. Change it all at once. Alternatively, if you want to select random ones to highlight that are not in a row, you click on your first one, whichever one that is, hold down control and you select your other cells. Then you let go of control and change your colors and it will select all the ones you clicked on. Let's go up to the top and this one shows the border. What each of these represent is what border you want to add or customize or change. So the first one is all borders. So that means outside, inside, rows, columns, all borders. If you have one cell selected, it will put a border on every border that's touching that cell. So let's select the whole table. So you can see there's the purple line around it. That means I've selected the whole table. We're gonna go back up to border, select this first. So we're gonna select all borders and then we're gonna select the color. And as you can see, it put the brown border on every single border. So let's go back and explore some of these other ones. So this one says, top borders. So no matter how many we select, so we're gonna select these bottom two rows, we're gonna go back up to borders, we're gonna click on top border, and then we're gonna change the color. So it is only gonna do the top border of what we selected. So it's treating it like a group. So that is how you can change the different borders and really customize your table to how you would like it. The last table tool that we have up at the top is table spacing. So we're just gonna click on that. And and for the table spacing, that is how much space is between each cell. Cell spacing is how much spacing there is within the cell. So let me put a lot of text in one of these boxes. So now if we do the cell spacing, watch this block here as I move it forward. You see it's adjusting, it's putting more space between the edge, the border, and the text. We're almost done with tables, I promise. We just have a few more options that we can look at. If you click on the table, there is this little button with three dots. So you can click on that and you can merge cells. This means you will combine them into one. So if we look at the table, the purple box is around this column. If I click merge cells, that's gonna turn that into one solid block. So let's click on it. See, one block. All right, so let's click on the three cells again. Then we have add column. So we can do that and it'll add another column to our table. So we did have three, now we have four columns. You can also hit the little plus sign to add a column. So now we have five columns. Let's go back to the three dots. You can also delete a column. You see when I hover over the delete column, over here the purple box turns red. So that lets me know which column I'm about to delete. You can also move a column to the left or right. So you can like swap columns essentially. So we can just do that. Can't really tell because, well, we can move this one. So I can move this column to the right and the one with my text is now moved over one. So then you also have some options to size the rows equally. So if we had gone in here and adjusted all of these to be different sizes like that, well, that doesn't really make a very visually appealing chart to look at or table to look at, right? It's, it's all wonky. So we're gonna hit the three dots we're gonna hit size rows equally, makes them all the same height. Also, you can size rows to content. So if you have some cells that have a lot of text and you have some that don't have a lot of text, here we have one box with a lot of text, one with a little. So we have a lot of space here, where this we don't have as much because the text fills it up. So we're gonna hit our three dots and we'll click size rows to content and it makes it to where it takes out all that additional space 
to where it's only as big as the text. So then the next one is size column to content. That's the exact same thing. It'll make the column as big or like as wide or as narrow as the text inside of it. And then also, so we were looking at the three dots on top, but there's also this three dots on the side. So it's pretty much the same thing, but there are a few things different. So if you wanted to add a row, you would just come here and then you could add a row here. If you'd like to see some other tools that I love using in Canva, then be sure to check out this video right here. And until next time, my name is Brittany and I make videos helping you create designs that are unique to you and your business so that you can step away from the cookie cutter templates that everybody else is using. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.